Hello, I'm Katie and this is Art Snaps, the podcast series celebrating Swindon's amazing collection of modern British art. Thanks so much for joining me for episode 13, which is going to explore artworks by members of the Bloomsbury Group. So far in this series, we've looked at a number of pieces in the collection, from exhibitions we're missing out on, including Pop and Prosperity and the Celebration of Colour at Swindon Museum and Art Gallery, as well as the Art on Tour exhibitions at the Steam Museum and the Civic Offices. And we've also looked at pieces from the collection around particular themes and subject matter, such as conflict, family and springtime. So when thinking about what to talk about next, I thought, why not look at a particular art group or movement represented in the collection? And I realised that I haven't yet shared a piece by a member of the Bloomsbury Group in an art snap, even though these are among my personal favourite pieces in the collection. And they're arguably some of the most important because they represent a really significant moment in British art. If you're not familiar with the Bloomsbury Group, they were an informal group of artists, as well as writers, philosophers and other intellectuals, working in the first half of the 20th century. And their ideas and attitudes were connected by an interest in visual experience and the pursuit of knowledge. And they were also linked by left liberal politics and a rejection of typical bourgeois or middle class conventions and behaviours. So they're really pushing boundaries and in art they rejected the traditional division between fine art and craft because they believed that all art forms were of equal value and at the same time they were embracing a very new and revolutionary aesthetic in England which valued things like form, colour and line over traditional rules of perspective and content in a piece. And because of this some of the most interesting and vibrant artworks of early 20th century Britain come from the Bloomsbury Group. So today I'm going to share three pieces from Swindon's collection by Vanessa Bell, Duncan Grant and Roger Fry, who were each defining members of the group. First, let's take a look at Studland Bay, a Black Sea coast, which was painted in 1911 by Roger Fry and is currently on show at Swindon Civic Offices. Fry was a really influential member of the Bloomsbury group and it's actually his writing and curation which led the direction that the group took with their art and this is in part because he brought groundbreaking European art to England with two very influential exhibitions in London in 1910 and 1912 which focused on post-impressionism and brought artists such as Paul Cezanne Henry Matisse, Pablo Picasso, Vincent van Gogh, all of these to the attention of an English audience for the very first time. And the public reception to this was largely negative, as this kind of work was really shocking and different to anything they'd seen before. But artists in the Bloomsbury group were excited by the potential of a new way of working, which was led by formal qualities such as line, colour, shape, space rhythm and design. And for the first time in hundreds of years, artists didn't care about reflecting reality, but rather believed that an image should have a reality of its own. So we get images like Studland Bay, which is characterised by large planes of contrasting colour with bold black outlines which really exaggerate the different forms within the work, such as the thin, kind of scraggly trees and the bulbous mound of earth. And we can see that he's kind of pared down the specific detail of the scene and he's not worried too much about a super realistic representation. So he's paying more attention to these lines and colours, which gives the work a great sense of design. And it also has this great warm luminosity, which really captures the atmosphere of a place. However, there has actually been some confusion over the years about the place depicted in the scene. Initially, it was thought to be Turkey, where Fry visited with Vanessa Bell and her husband Clive. And of course, it was assumed that the title referred to the Black Sea. But the image was painted after their return to England and actually shows a scene a little bit closer to home in Studland Bay in Dorset. But because of the warm, luminous colours, it almost has a continental feel to it. And it could well be that the hues and climate of Turkey were still playing on his mind when he painted it. 
Now I want to spend some time talking about Vanessa Bell, who was integral to starting the Bloomsbury Group when, in 1904, she moved to a house in Gordon Square in Bloomsbury, along with her two brothers and her sister, who was the eminent writer Virginia Woolf. And there they created an environment for intellectual discussion and surrounded themselves with artists, art critics and writers who became known as the Bloomsbury Group. At the outbreak of World War I, Bell moved to Charleston Farmhouse along with a number of key members of the group, including her sister Virginia and Duncan Grant, who was a conscientious objector to the war. And there they were able to remain reasonably secluded and embrace an alternative and creative lifestyle that they craved. Charleston Farmhouse also became the setting for the famous Amiga workshops, which were set up by Roger Fry and ran by Bell and Grant. Through the workshops, they aimed to bring post-impressionist ideas about colour, form and rhythm into interior decoration and to bring contemporary art into everyday life through interior design. And here the famous Bloomsbury interior was born and pieces like Nude with Poppies from Swindon's collection were created. And I should also note that at Roger Fry's first Impressionist exhibition in London, Bell was one of those artists who was really excited by the art that she saw. And she exclaimed, quote, a sudden liberation and encouragement to feel for oneself, as if one might say things one had felt, instead of saying things that other people told one to feel, unquote. And as a result of this experience, her work, be it painting, domestic items or stage designs, was characterised by simplified forms and bold colours and had an interesting visual language of its own. So Nude with Poppies is a small yet vibrant painting which shows a reclining female figure beneath two giant red poppies laying on a bed of light blue against a background of soothing green waves. And we can see that not only has she stripped this scene down to its bare essentials, but she's also exaggerated the lines and distorted the sense of scale to make the piece more lyrical, more dreamlike. And this makes sense because the work is actually associated with a bedhead, or headboard if you prefer, which Bell designed for Mary Hutchinson, who was a friend and fellow member of the Bloomsbury Group. And we don't know whether it's a preparatory sketch or a record of the final piece, but according to our catalogue, a photograph of the actual bedhead was published in the February 1919 edition of Vogue. And the fact that this is also a painting shows how Bell was breaking down the distinction between decorative arts and fine art. And this was a very groundbreaking thing to be doing in the early decades of the 1900s. And I'm always quite taken with the freshness and simplicity of this piece, which in its own way really defines what the Bloomsbury artists were doing. Next, I want to look at this gorgeous portrait by Duncan Grant, who was another artist who was really influenced by Fry's post-impressionist exhibition in 1910. So much so that he, along with Vanessa Bell, was included in the second post-impressionist exhibition in 1912. And this was also the same year that he began painting with Bell, with whom he would go on to run the Omega workshops at Charleston Farmhouse. Seated model from 1915 to 16 was painted in Gordon Square, where, as I mentioned, the Bloomsbury Group first set themselves up. Now, if you have a good eyesight, you'll see that the date in the top centre says 1912, but Grant, who was notoriously unreliable when it came to dating his work, didn't actually add that until years later, in 1964, when he was preparing for a big retrospective exhibition. In fact, the piece is likely to have been painted in around 1915 to 16, before he moved to Charleston. It probably depicts a paid model, which was the case with many of Grant's head and shoulders portraits of this time. And she's shown gazing in the direction of a light source, which looks to me like it's probably a window, because she's definitely within an interior space and there's a hint of a window frame and curtain behind her. What's really striking about it is the way that Grant has suggested the contrast between light and dark with different colours, rather than using smooth tonal changes. 
That lovely mauve stroke of paint down her face serves to suggest the shadow and also reflects the colour of her clothes. And there are also soft yellows and oranges within her skin and clothing that are repeated in elements of her surroundings. So it's a beautiful composition of colour and light, which is depicted with seeming ease in really lovely, loose and fluid brushstrokes. I don't think it's a stretch to say that this is a real jewel in Swindon's art collection from one of the most celebrated artists of the early 20th century. And I'm going to bring this art snap to an end there. But before I sign off, if you have enjoyed this introduction to the Bloomsbury Group, it's worth noting that the Charleston Farmhouse in Sussex is now an operating kind of museum to the Bloomsbury Group and is really beautiful and worth a visit whenever it's able to reopen after lockdown, of course. And speaking of lockdown, if you are looking for other kind of inspiration and other things to look at and read and listen to, do take a look at our blog, www.swindermuseumandartgallery.org.uk slash art on tour, which has loads of resources and interesting information relating to Swindon's collection on there. So do take a look if you fancy it. Either way, I hope you join me again for next week's Art Snap, which will explore yet another exciting aspect of Swindon's art collection. For now, thank you very much for joining me and stay safe. Bye bye.